And welcome to It's Not Your Fault. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Kim Power Stilson, with host Steve Shank and co host Lexi. And we're here today to talk with you about It's Not Your Fault. Lexi's hiding. She doesn't feel like being on camera today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a couple of us, right? <laughs> I never want to be on camera. Bad idea. Well, well, she knows what I'm going to talk about. Yes, and today, what and are we going to talk about? She's feeling guilty. Um, it's kind of re it's ki it's kind of weird, you know. Back during World War II, um, my brother was in the Navy, and uh, they all uh, always had chaplains available to the people. And when you really get into some real trouble and things are, when you got nobody to ask and it's all up to you and you have no place else to go, people oftentimes that never would pray, pray. They say that there's. Uh, I don't know in this generation if they even know what a foxhole is, but it's it's a hole you dig in the ground to get down in so you don't get shot. Okay. Very and very then, common during um, on the German yeah. um, countryside to even have foxholes now that have kind of been filled in, yeah. but whoosh, people just fall in. Yeah. And those were soldiers there. They find um, artifacts of soldiers who right. have stuck there for days trying to hide from the bullets and yeah. plan their strategy for war. Yep. Yeah. And they say that there are no atheists in foxholes. Mm. Um, I've heard that expression before. From you. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah from me. <laughs> you hear a lot of old stuff from me, right? You know? Anyway, this, this fur ball is kind of driving me nuts here. She's just bound determined to hide, so anyway. But anyway, she, she knows what I'm going to talk about. The fascinating thing that we've got with It's Not Your Fault and dealing with people and their anxiety is that if you think about it, and, and this is not a religious program. There, by the way, there's a difference between spirituality and religion. Religion is what people go and become a part of mm -hmm. in order to hopefully develop spirituality. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily match with any religion. You have some highly spiritual people in every single religion and non-religion that you have in any belief system. Uh, you have some people that have developed spiritually, and that really is what it's all about. And, and this is not about religion today. It's just about how we think and what we do. When do people pray that believe in prayer? Um, they usually, you know, some of them are, are inclined enough so that they'll pray every day, night and morning, and, and do what they're supposed to do. They should on themselves until they do what, they're, what they should do. Ah, they should. And that's, okay. that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, don't should on yourself too much, otherwise you, you don't realize that it's not your fault. So anyway, but given that fact, when do people pray? Really pray. It's when they've got nobody else to ask when uh, their mother doesn't have an answer and when the teacher doesn't have an answer when the preacher doesn't have an answer when their best friend doesn't have an answer then they say oh my gosh i'm all on my own and they they don't feel like they have the answer themselves and so then if they're hit across the forehead with a hard enough two by four so it drives them to their knees and all of a sudden they realize the meaning of the little plaque that i've got on the wall that says um, Necessity is the mother of invention, but terror is the father of pure inspiration. When they get hit hard enough so they got no place else to go, then they really pray. Now, what are the procedures? Okay, usually they don't dare uh, reach out to God and say, um, Well, I just want this and want this and want this. They usually say, Well, I'm thankful for all the stuff that I've got so far. Does that sound like gratitude? Yeah, so far, mm, it's like a little catchy. Yeah, we, we go through what we're grateful for. And like if you're going to ask... But I want ask, more. <laughs> but yeah, but if you're, if you're going to ask your mom or your dad for, for something, you say, gee whiz, you're really nice to me. Now, be yeah. a little bit nicer. Yeah, and so we do people, the dishes for your mom because I want. Them. Yeah, in in fact, when people are taught how to pray, oftentimes they're taught to express gratitude first. Now that keep that thought in mind, mm -hmm. and That's then first. they express what they want, and then most of the literature, the motivational list, literature. Oh, we decided to come forward. And, <laughs> she, see, she's listening now. You you better listen because if the dog listens, then you know this is good stuff. But anyway, true. <laughs> I believe that canines know. The fact is, is that when we when we get into 
expressing what it is that we need help with or need to accomplish, then a lot of the books say, Norman Vincent Peale says, let go and let God. Okay, what have we said about once you set an objective, once you decide what you want to achieve, then you do not think what? You do not think how. You need to let go and just see and visualize and feel what it is that you want to achieve. Well, that's kind of letting go and letting God. Okay, and then you create strong emotion about that which you want to achieve. So, what we've done with It's Not Your Fault, first of all, realize that you don't have any problems that can't be dealt with. And then we've got the little journal, the My Book of Life journal, where you start <laughs> out by listing all of the things you're grateful for. And you go over those on a regular basis. And then the next thing, you list all of your objectives, the things that you want to accomplish. And you list them as though they have already been achieved or gotten or been done. So kind of like the gratitude and the gratitude. Uh-huh. Right? So it's all gratitude now. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is systematized prayer. Even for people <sighs> that who don't sense. believe in prayer. It's okay. List everything you're grateful for, then list what, list what you need to achieve. If you have any fears, you got to understand, every fear is related to a dependency that you have that's mm -hmm. being threatened. And so if you're dependent on something that you are afraid might get disappeared, then you list a goal as having already achieved that and been safe and independent with regard to that fear. And then you do not think about how to achieve it, you let go of it. And then every morning and every evening, you restate it to yourself with emotion. Now, that's emotion key. is the creative force. Yeah. That's right. I think, it, I think it's interesting to note, too, on this. What we're talking about is you're grateful for the things that you have, and you, that's a real emotion. And then you're grateful for the things that you, you plan on having. Mm -hmm. You don't think about how, but that emotion gets to seep over. I think that's brilliant. Um, how, strongly, that how strongly do you feel about curing that cancer? Yeah, but if you have a fear like that, right, you go right back to that gratitude, and then you're in a place that it eliminates the fear. the fear. It eliminates the and fear. It, it also, works. It really it, works. It too. also eliminates the question of, yeah, I I know that that my cancer is cured, and I feel perfectly healthy and strong and able. Mm -hmm. But how am I going to do that? Wait, 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 wait. No how. I'm grateful for the fact that I still have two legs and I'm not like like Jim with the club foot and the one eye <laughs> that you heard <laughs> about from on another, another show. program. <laughs> and you don't want to hear about it again. It, it, go back and yeah, watch that show. Watch anyway, it on Ustream or YouTube. So what we've, what we've got here is a systematic approach to how prayer works. Now, for those of you that uh, are of the atheistic bent, go find a foxhole and it'll... No, that's not really what we're trying to say. But you don't have to believe in God. But those of you that do, it's okay to understand there's one thing. God is not an enabler. Interesting thought. Mm. That is an enabler. Now, we should talk about that after we get back from break, because that's a big concept. God is not an enabler. So you're watching Steve Shank. He is the author of It's Not Your Fault and the host of It's Not Your Fault talk show. You can find it every week on Roku, Roku Box, Ustream, and on YouTube. You can find Steve Shank on Facebook. We're going to be right back with more of It's Not Your Fault and talk about that concept. Yeah, and you atheists, don't touch that channel switcher. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. I'm going to get to this. you next. Folks, have you ever realized that freedom is spelled F-O-O-D? Food. After air and water, food is our greatest dependency. Taking control of that dependency ensures personal power, independence, and freedom. We can't control earthquakes, storms, martial law, dollar crash inflation, the global warming hoax, farm and garden restrictive legislation, job loss, crop failures, or the 2012 planet disruptions. However, if we have our own food, none of these can control us. Hunger 
anger can never be used to control you if you never are forced to stand in a bread line because you do not have your own bread it seems the only freedom we still have control of is possession of food if we don't control our own food events are rapidly moving to use food to control us Freedom Truly is spelled F-O-O-D. Contact eFoodsDirect.com or call 800-409-5633. That's eFoodsDirect.com or 800-409-5633. Welcome back to It's Not Your Fault, again hosted by Steve Shank, and I'm your co-host, Kim Power Stilson. And we've got Lexi here with us, and we've been talking about foxholes. And actually, there's way more than that. But we were before the break, we talked about the uh, systematizing of prayer and how gratitude is this focus that could remove fear. And then you made an interesting point, Steve, that I think that we'd all love to talk more about. God is not an enabler. What do you mean by that? Well... How many times when you, even if you're intensely in need of help, um, does the average person have an angel come down, stand in front of him and say, now here's what you do, Melvin. How scary. <laughs> you need to climb up on top of the mountain with your Jeep Cherokee and your 2,000 rounds of ammunition, your 30 out 6 and it doesn't happen. But what does happen is you get inspiration and guidance, but... Let me go back to the story of Joseph. Remember the story of Joseph yes. of Egypt? Everybody talks, talks about him in the being big store. He got the inspiration that they needed to store up a bunch of a bunch of food for when the bad times came. And what did they do then? What did they do? Did God say, okay, now I'm going to go out and I'm going to plow those fields and I'm going to plant those seeds and I'm going to harvest the stuff while the Egyptians sat alongside of the fields uh, in lawn chairs drinking mint juleps and saying, go get them, God, didn't happen. Yeah, not quite like that. <laughs> Doesn't usually happen. In fact, if, if somebody out there has had that experience, I want to talk to them because they should be doing what I'm doing, and I'll go sit and listen to you talk. <laughs> but the fact is that it does not happen. God is not an enabler. Now let's talk about a, an Good example point. that we used in the, in the last, uh, in the last uh, little session that we had together about the father that wanted to make sure that his son got all of his weights lifted and got built up and got buff and everything right. like that. And the right. father went in there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the kid was working on it. He says, son, son, that's too heavy for you. Let me go. And he, he goes out and lifts the weight for his kid. And he says, now, are you going to be here tomorrow? I'll, I'll, be, I'll be here for sure. And I'll, I'll practice your basketball and I'll, I'll yeah. lift your weights for that you. That guy's an enabler. Yeah, that's an that's, enabler. That's an enabler. And that is me raising six kids over the last however many hundred years because a kid get in trouble and I say okay now now let, let me let me bail you out let me you know fix your problem and let me let me throw some bucks at it or go out and sell another bunch of food storage to somebody so I can you know pay for your fine or, or whatever yeah, done it myself yeah well okay does God do that no. maybe we ought to take a look at how he does it he says you got a problem you need to lift some weight. Go lift the stinking weight yourself. Build up the muscle, and that'll make you strong enough so when you have to, you can punch the guy out that insults your wife as you're walking down the street and says, she, says she's uh, not attractive. Well, it's like that karate kid, right? Don't do that, by the way. That's <laughs> yeah, no. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's not what I Married to cop, not a good idea. <laughs> but you know the karate kid, the new one, where the guy, he has him take off his jacket, put it up, take off his jacket, put it up. Uh -huh. This repetition. Yeah. And he does that for weeks and weeks and weeks, and he's finally tired of it. He says, you don't even know karate. And the guy said, you know, he starts you know, pummeling him, and, he, and the repetition of the things he did. And, and I think I finally got it when you just said that, that that's the gratitude. You're also building strength. You're also building muscles of gratitude. Right. And you see, we as parents, or we with our own selves, you see, I can't fix you, and I as a parent can't fix my son, who is sitting here watching this today and, uh, Hi, Ryan. and see me embarrass myself, but the fact is that I can't do anything for you. Well, not to, not to be uh, sacrilegious, but God can't do anything for you. 
he's smart enough and wise enough to know that the only one that can fix you and help you is yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you need these trials and difficulties, like Jim mm -hmm. that we talked about before that was born with a club foot and one eye, right. that, uh, that it is an opportunity to strengthen himself. So let's get back to God being an enabler. If he did it for you, you would not gain the strength that he knows you need mm -hmm. to know in and of yourself. This is not saying, I'm, I'm trusting in the arm of man, which the scriptures say you shouldn't do. No. It's being grateful for what you have. And then realizing what is the fear in your life or what, what you need to develop or what you need to accomplish. Seeing it as already done, having strong emotion about having it, having it accomplished, and not getting in the way of yourself. You remember the thing about with little brother Pogo, the the um, <clears throat> the cartoon from a whole bunch of time ago. He came in and he said, "We have met the enemy, and they is us. Mm -hmm. We get in our own way by after we have set an objective." saying, okay, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. And we create more stress in ourselves. No, it's the way of getting rid of stress, getting rid of fear. It's going to be solved. The universe has all the abundance available to you if you're just smart enough to say, this is what I see as being already accomplished. I feel it. I see it. I think it. And now I let go. And I don't think how. I just know it's happening. And all of a sudden... Got no fear. You don't try and make God an enabler mm -hmm. and you be the enablee and say, okay, I'm going to self-destruct if you don't fix me, God. So how does Doesn't that work. relate to the building muscles, focusing on gratitude? Well, very simply, what happened with the Egyptians? They went out and worked, put in the food, had the stuff, so that when the hard times came, they were prepared and they did have what they envisioned. And they had yeah. what they envisioned. <laughs> and you see, if you don't think of how, you just go ahead and start doing what you know to do. First of all, the only thing that you know to begin with on something that's really hard is just to write it down. <laughs> but then you repeat it to yourself and you have the emotion and everything. And the discipline to do it every day. And the discipline to do Not it every day. Not just when you're in the foxhole. That's right. And, but then... If you don't think about the how, then you won't get discouraged to stop and stop doing it. If you don't say, well, no, it didn't happen, so, no, 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 no. It's not your problem. It's the problem of the universe. You've turned it over, and you just allow it to happen. You don't get in your own way by thinking how, and by thinking how you do not, you, by not thinking how, you do not uncreate what you just created. The emotion and the thought creates it. The emotion and thought creates it. Well, this is Steve Shank, and if you want more information, you need to come to the website, steveshank.tv, buy the book, get the book, get the My Book of Life, try it for yourself, come to the seminars, attend, um, watch the shows every week. Um, in the meantime, we'll be back with more of It's Not Your Fault and Steve Shank um, next time. So please tune in on Roku Box, YouTube, and Ustream. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.